Welcome to Bible for Overcomers. So I want to talk about three people um, that probably or perhaps you're involved with that will be detrimental to your dreams, your passions, your goals, your spiritual growth, and many other things. Now it's hard, well nigh impossible in our environment, especially with job, school, transportation, wherever you meet folks, you're going to be around these three types of people. But you need to do the best you can. If you want to grow, you've got to get away from toxic influences. We've talked about media, um, be it music, be it news, be it the matrix and their messaging and propaganda. But let's just talk about three individuals. And the first one, and we're going to be in just, and we'll keep this quick, but in the book of Proverbs and Psalms mostly. But the Bible says in Proverbs 16, 18, this is the first one, the person that is filled with pride. Now we're all, we're all liable to get proud of ourselves. This is not, by the way, we're not speaking about being confident. Being confident is very important. Uh, you want to be competent. You want to feel that you can handle a situation. We're speaking about pride, and pride is the first sin. That when Lucifer said, I will be like the Most High God, I will ascend, you know, into his throne. This is pride. And so Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. It's like guaranteed. People say the law of karma or the law of reaping and sowing. But well, here's very specific. If you are around people that are full of pride and conceit, it's going to affect you one way or another because they are headed for a fall. They are headed for destruction. Now that's not to say that they can't be recovered from that situation. Obviously, people can. And it also says in the book of Psalms, Psalm 119, that long psalm about the Word of God, about the commandments and, the, and all the statutes of God. It says in verse 21, Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed. So does God deal in curses? You better believe it. So God says he's, he will curse the proud, the conceitful individual, and that they'll even take a fall or could perhaps go into full destruction. You want to be away from those people. Number two, a person that is quick-tempered. How many stories are we all familiar with about folks that have ruined their lives and perhaps ruined other lives because they had to say something and then they should have just been quiet. You know, um, a traffic incident, uh, road rage, uh, somebody said something and they have to pop back. There's a time to just walk away and there's a time to be quiet. In fact, that many times shows who is the stronger person, the one who has temperance, which in Galatians is the last of the fruits of the Spirit listed in Galatians 5, 22, uh, 21, 22, 23. And he says temperance, that is self-control. That's not just over alcohol, it's temperance being self-control. So if you have to say something, if you have to pop back, if you're with somebody that is hot-tempered, you know that trouble's going to come. And if you're around them, it's going to be pretty hard, impossible to stay away from that trouble. The Bible also says that um, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that rules his spirit than he that takes a city. That's pretty strong. Proverbs 16 and 32, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. You're better than Alexander the Great. If you can control your nature, your anger, your passions. And he's better that rules his spirit than he that takes a city. So you'll want to be joined at the hip with people in relationships, whatever business partners, however it is, and I understand you can't get away from some of these people and some of these folks are in our families, but the more you are around pride and the more you're around quick temper, uncontrollable anger, 
the worse it's going to be for you, the worse it's going to be for your reputation, perhaps for your possessions, for your life, definitely for your spiritual walk. And then the last is sort of a catch-all, but it, the Bible has a lot to say about the fool. That's right. In Proverbs, you can take a concordance and track down that word fool, especially if you've got a King James Bible, and you're going to see fool all over the book of Proverbs. And a couple verses um, stand out to me. One says that if you perceive in somebody that they don't know, they don't have knowledge, that they're just dealing foolishly, that you should depart from them. You should get away from them, um, let alone be buddies with them pal up with them because a fool will always bring hard times to those that are around them. Uh, I want to find another, yeah, here's another verse, Proverbs 17 and 12, let a bear robbed of her whelps. In other words, let a mama bear, let, let her cubs be taken from her. It'd be better to meet that mama bear, let a bear robbed of her whelps meet a man rather than a fool in his folly. So it'd be better for you to be hiking and to meet a mama bear. Actually, I've come, I've, this happened to me before I'm smo uh, in the Great Smoky Mountains years ago, was hiking alone and came across um, cubs. And then sure enough, I looked to the left and there was a mama bear. That was a bad situation. Well, the Bible says that a worse situation is to meet a fool in his folly. That's a, that fool really thinks he's got something going on. He's going to drag you in on it. Come on and get a piece of this. This, this. Let's do this. You want a piece of that action, you are absolutely going to get burned. So the Bible talks about those three types of people. Pray for them. Pray all you want for them. But don't waste your years with people like that. They are going to hurt you in your spiritual growth. Rather... And it's, it's, I call it the replacement theory. As even you know, Jesus, he spoke about when a man has demons that are cast out of him. And now I believe that's literal, but I also think you could take that context and say when somebody gets rid of bad habits or evil influences, as we're talking about here, that he goes about, walks about, and, you know, his house has been... His house has been cleaned. He comes back. You know, his situation is better, but he didn't replace it. She didn't replace it. That's the point. If you want to get rid of the fool, of the quick-tempered, uh, hot-tempered person in your life, you're going to get rid of um, this, this, you know, these, these type of influences, the proud. Then you've got to go and replace that with people that are, that are seeking that are ambitious in a good way, that are trying to grow in Jesus, trying to grow in their lives, trying to be better parents, be better husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever. They're trying to improve their situation. They are always wanting to grow. You need to be around those people. I think, I think life is evident. You don't need me to tell you that. You know that. You can see your friends. You can see people in your life that have been impacted by hanging around with the wrong people. And... If you look close, you, maybe you'll see people that have been accelerated greatly to the upside by being around positive, uplifting, encouraging people. Um, that doesn't mean they're eternal optimists, rather they're realists, but they understand that to get anywhere in life, you're gonna have to work hard, you're gonna have to get moving. And especially in the kingdom of God, we are called to a highway of holiness, to serving God. And this book right here tells us what happens when you hang around with those three types of, of people. So let us always be going forth in the Lord Jesus and me making those changes in our lives that we can continue to grow. I'm sorry if you got glitched there. For some reason, my screen went out. Anyway, that's the message. Hope you got something out of it. Give it a like and go forward for the Lord Jesus Christ.